Good morning, Mr. Chair and Madam Chair. Thank you, Sage, for inviting me to give a talk. Uh, I'm happy to announce I'm moving after roughly 20 years from Belgium to Italy, and exactly in Bergamo, the city where originally I come from. And so this is one of the talk I give uh, in plenary session. Um, if we go to speak uh, about, uh, this is my disclosure, uh, if we go to speak about uh, thyroid cancer, first of all, we have to recognize that uh, there are three main histological types, the differentiated, the undifferentiated, which is mostly called uh, anaplastic, and the medullary. And the incidence uh, grow in uh, the past four decades, and uh, you see that uh, there is an increase, especially in South Korea, about the among, uh, among adolescent and young patients. And uh, in the over the last 10 years, there is an increase of 4.5% of incidence per year. In the US, there is an increase incidence of roughly 3.6% per year. And we pass from 4.5% to 14, roughly, and mostly related to the increase of papillary thyroid cancer, so the differentiated type. And you see here uh, the uh, um, incidence related at the diagnosis per year from localized to regional to distant to unknown uh, region. The recurrence exists. And after the uh, surgery, there is a 12% of recurrence, which increase after one, two, three years from 3.2% to 10.4%. There is a more recurrence in male uh, uh, patients. Uh, and uh, uh, the aspect related to the recurrence are mostly free, the tumor diameter, the lymph node metastasis, and the pathologic type. And you see that uh, there is a, a eventually higher uh, recurrence rate related to larger tumor, lower rate of lymph node, and lower level of tissue differentiation. About the survival and mortality, the five-year survival rate exceed, fortunately, 95% of the cases in North America and much of Europe. In US, uh, the mortality increased from 1.1% per year to 2.9% per year for the papillary again type. And the anaplastic unfortunately remain worse with a median survival of three months. Thyroid surgery is basically uh, of two types, total thyroidectomy with or without lymphadenectomy and amythyroidectomy. And if we look in literature, the first reports on minimally invasive uh, thyroid uh, resection was reported in 1997 by Christiano Usher with uh, endoscopic thyroid lobectomy, and in 99 with uh, what we call in literature MIVAT, minimal invasive video sister thyroidectomy by Paolo Micoli. Uh, now, looking about the data, uh, first of all, we look about the large series and then we pass to the comparison. And about the large series, we found the, about, uh, the most of uh, the paper reported uh, regards the MIVAT, and we have uh, this nice paper with 825 uh, malignant tumors treated by uh, minimal invasive surgery. And you see an 85% of cure rate after a mean follow-up of 7.5 years, so pretty good. Uh, another nice large series reported regards the transoral trans robotic thyroidectomy. 200 uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma with uh, an average of five free uh, tumor, remove no conversion to endoscopic from robotic or open surgery. Now, we pass to 
some reports regarding the comparison. First, uh, MIVAT versus OPEN, nine trials and meta-analysis, 500 patients. And uh, in favor for endoscopic, statistically significant VAS score, pain at one day, and cosmetic results. In favor for open, shorter operative time. Regarding endoscopic thyroidectomy bilateral areola approach well, and uh, open surgery, we have a nice paper comparing 200 versus 200, and you see that there is a significant more nodes removed after minimal invasive approach. Regarding, again, endoscopic transaxillary and open thyroidectomy, we have this paper with 275 versus 224, and significant longer operative time and lesser number of nodes by endoscopic with more tumor recurrence by open. Endoscopic bilateral axillo breast approach, which is called BABA, uh, John like data. <laughs> we have uh, 173 BABA versus 830 open thyroidectomy. What we found is a statistically significant longer time by endoscopic, like before. But statistical major number of nodes and larger tumor sites by open. Probably there was a selection of the patient. Now, about robotic and open, in this large meta-analysis, 5,200 patients in favor for robotics, significant lesser blood loss, low level of swelling impairment, and better cosmetic outcomes. For open, significant shorter operative time, greater number of nodes removed, less total drain, and lower serum thyroglobin level. Both techniques equivalent in adverse event complication and a surgical completeness. Now, again, a comparison between robotic BABA and open surgery. In favor for open, less operative time, more number of nodes. Both techniques equivalent for the rest of the outcomes. Robotic versus endoscopic, this is and another quite nice uh, meta-analysis because compare roughly 1,000 robot versus 1,000 endoscopy. In favor for robot, greater amount of drainage fluid, okay? And for robotic, uh, significant, uh, sorry, for endoscopic, statistical significant difference in complication postoperatively. If we look about transoral, uh, endoscopic transvestibular approach to ATVA, versus open, we see a quite huge new number because 150 transoral versus 125 open. And transoral was um, uh, concluded as feasible in selected thyroid cancer patient. This, this is, I think, one of the message. And achieve longer operative time, of course, as the other uh, minimal invasive surgery at the beginning. No difference for number of uh, nodes, and cosmetically and oncologically safe. If we look about the transolar robot thyroidectomy and we compare to open, we have uh, a nice study comparing 47 and versus 43, and about the transolar uh, robotic thyroidectomy, there is longer operative time, especially in the learning curve, which is estimated to be 15 cases, lower VAS score, and higher cosmetic outcomes. Now, in general, when uh, we look in literature and we compare minimally invasive uh, thyroidectomy and open, what we find is 60% open versus 40 endoscopic, if we not include transoral. If we consider transoral alone and we compare to open, in, in terms of papers, we have 45% of open and 55 for transoral. And about robotic versus open is still less, 30 robot 
versus 70% for open. Between minimal invasive surgery, in general, it's, it is still more common to do by endoscopy, 70%, than robotic, 30%. And about the transoral, uh, the robotic, sorry, we have 50 and 50 between transoral and again bilateral breast and uh, axillo uh, thyroidectomy. Looking now the distribution in terms of uh, the region, we see that here in the US, there is uh, uh, the endoscopic uh, show with the by Mikoli at the beginning, as well as uh, transoral, both endoscopic and robotic. And worldwide, we have a quite difference because we see that the endoscopic is uh, more common in Italy, China, and Korea. Transaxillary more in Korea, Baba, China, and Korea, so again in Asia. And robotic, you see Baba in Korea, and transoral robotic in Korea and Thailand, but in Italy also, in Sicily especially, and uh, robotic uh, transoral in Korea. So, in conclusion, we can first of all say that minimal invasive surgery for thyroid cancer is a developing field, no doubt. There are no randomized controlled trials supporting minimal invasive approach. Most experience comes from single institutional centers. At FUF, we have a lot of meta-analysis, as you have seen. And open thyroidectomy for cancer remain the most popular approach with proved lesser operative time, major number of nodes, and of course, a disadvantage of uh, uh, aesthetic results. Now, about the cosmetic uh, outcomes in order to enhance, minimal invasive surgery was developed as endoscopic as well as robotic, and it seems that between the minimal invasive approach, robotic, uh, uh, sorry, transoral, endoscopic, uh, as well as robotic, keep uh, um, importance and interest. I really thank you for your attention.